Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to lesson four of our watch servicing lessons. If this is your first time, my name is Alex, and here we make videos on watch service, repair, and troubleshooting. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested in, let's jump right in. Today we're going to cover the motion works on the ST36, a basic hand wound movement. So what is the motion works? Well, basically the motion works is a small train of wheels and pinions that make the hour and minute hand turn at the right relative speed in the right direction and on the same center. The right relative speed is a 12 to 1 ratio or 12 turns of the minute hand producing one turn of the hour wheel. I would also point out that this is a reduction ratio. What that means is you have a pinion turning a wheel as opposed to a wheel turning a pinion, like what you would find in the powertrain. That would be called a step up ratio. The motion works also allows the hands to be mounted concentrically, which just means that the two hands share the same center point. The right direction, of course, is that the two hands are turning clockwise while the watch is operating normally. Okay, so that's what the motion works does. Now let's look at how it does it. All right, so let's get into this thing. So for our disassembly, we're just going to take off the setting lever jumper and we'll remove the spring underneath before we can get to the motion works. Now, just a little tip here. Uh, when removing this, the setting lever jumper is under tension. So you can grab it with your tweezers and pull on it. But oftentimes that will damage the end of the tweezers. So a better method is just to take your screwdriver, stick it under the setting lever jumper, and just give it a slight twist. And that will release it from the pin. Now, don't do it so hard that you bend the fucking thing. It just needs a little bit and it'll pop right off. Then you can finish taking out the screw. So we have the first intermediate wheel, the second intermediate wheel, the hour wheel, the minute wheel, and the cannon pinion. To remove the cannon pinion, I'm just going to use a Presto tool. So the way the Presto tool works is you take the two jaws, you put them right under the, right where the indents are. And you squeeze it together and it will gently pull it up and that's it cannon pinion removed the cannon pinion is made up of a pinion and a pipe now some of the pipes are open at the top but on this particular cannon pinion it's closed the cannon pinion is made up of two pieces you have the pinion at the bottom and in this case it has 12 teeth and then you have the pipe of the cannon pinion Looking at the top of the cannon pinion, you can clearly see where the minute hand sits. Now, there are several distinct setups for a cannon pinion, but this one in particular uses what's called the indenting system. The cannon pinion is friction fit onto the extended center arbor of the center wheel so that it turns with the center wheel while it is driven by the barrel and makes one complete turn every 12 hours. This is the extended center arbor, which is coming from the center wheel from the other side of the movement, sticking through the plate. For this indenting system to work, the extended center arbor has a groove cut in it that has a long taper on the top and a shorter taper on the bottom. Now on the cannon pinion itself, there's a slight indentation, which is called the snap groove. Now this is pressed into either one side or both sides of the pipe. Now when you press the cannon pinion onto the extended center arbor, this indention, which is on the inside of the snap groove, on the inside of the pipe, slides down the long taper and stops on the shorter taper. This is what makes that click sound when you 
press the cannon pinion onto the arbor. Now let's go ahead and start reassembling the parts. The cannon pinion fits down over the extended center arbor. Then you just take your tweezers. In this case, I'm using a pair of bronze, but I would also use brass tweezers for this. And you push down and you'll hear a slight click. Now the key between these two parts is that the friction needs to be just enough to drive the extended center arbor and the canyon pinion together, you know, while the watch is running normally, but it also needs to be free enough to allow the hands to be turned manually without damaging the powertrain or the escapement. Now, when you're assembling the motion works, always, always press the cannon pinion on first so that you don't end up damaging the teeth on the minute wheel. Our next piece going on is the minute wheel. Now the minute wheel serves two purposes. The first is to reduce the rotation or speed of the hour wheel so that it is only going to make one revolution every 12 hours. So when you look at this, you'll notice that you have a pinion driving a wheel. So this would be a reduction ratio. The other purpose of the minute wheel is to turn the cannon pinion and the hour wheel when you're setting the hands. Our next part is the hour wheel. Now the hour wheel is also made up of a pipe and a wheel. This pipe is where the hour hand gets pressed onto. Now you'll notice that the hour wheel free floats on the cannon pinion, which would be turning inside the pipe. To help keep the hour wheel pressed down into its position, we use a dial washer. The dial washer has a slight curve in it in which it applies tension between the hour wheel and the underside of the dial to keep the hour wheel from coming out of its position. Now this is gonna be true in most cases, unless the hour wheel is actually held down in place by some sort of plate or something like that, which is holding it down. Dial washers are pretty common in movements. And the dial washer just fits right on top of the hour wheel, just like that. Now to complete the assembly of the motion works, we have two intermediate wheels. The intermediate wheel's sole purpose is to transfer the motion of the sliding pinion to the hour and minute wheel to set the time. Now, as you can see, when the stem is pulled out to the second position on this movement, the groove of the stem, which is holding the pin of the setting lever, forces the setting lever to push the yoke forward, the yoke which is sitting in the groove of the sliding pinion, so that the teeth of the sliding pinion mesh with the teeth of the first intermediate wheel, which operates the motion works. Now this is a very simple, very basic motion works, but in all watches, this is kind of where it starts. So let's put the, the rest of the keyless works back together. So we'll just push the yoke and the sliding pinion back into the first position. Lay our spring into position. And now our spring's in. Now we'll install the setting lever jumper back. Another thing that I would point out is when you see a bridge or a plate that only has one screw, normally there's going to be what's called a steady pin that comes up through the plate somewhere if one if not two and that's what this post on this intermediate wheel is serving not only as the post for this intermediate wheel but it's also a steady pin so this comes up through the plate where this one just lies below the surface Now again, anytime you're 
assembling any kind of system as after you assemble it you want to check the functions so we're in the first position this is the winding position so we can clearly hear the watch winding and you'll also notice the balance started moving now on this movement, there's only two positions. So you pull it to the second position. Now we're in the time setting position and our train of wheels and our motion train is working as it should. Sweet. Now you may hear of some people just using their tweezers to remove the canyon pinion as opposed to using a tool. The best practice would be to use a cannon pinion removing tool. Now basically there's two styles. The first style is the Bergeon 4854 and the other is the cannon pinion presto tool like I used in the video. Being that the Bergeron tool can range anywhere from $150 to $250 and this tool you can pick up for about $13 to $15 Personally, I don't see any advantage on using the more expensive tool. The amount of resistance that a canyon pinion has when you're removing it is pretty small. So there's really no need to have a real heavy duty tool. They look cool, but there's a lot of other tools you're gonna need to buy down the road and you really wanna think about spending money wisely. So my recommendation is just get a Presto tool you'll be more than happy with it. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Now, if you learned anything today, please don't hesitate to smash that like button. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Until next time, guys, we're out of here.